Thank you very much. And good afternoon, everybody. And firstly, thank you very much to the forum for giving us this opportunity to share our potential project. And also, actually, for the opportunity to hear all of the other projects throughout the day, which has given us an interesting insight into potential innovations in other areas. And like you said, it's great to see so many potential innovations. And I like the shared uh, open resource and sharing is all part of what we're about to do. So it's lovely to see that here today. In terms of what we're going to do today, as you've outlined, our project title is Street Law, a module to enhance the transferable skills of law students through a digitally resourced and digitally supported module in community legal education, where undergraduate law students will be teaching law to second level students. Who's involved? Well, I'll introduce myself. I'm Brona Heveron, and this is Siobhan Cullen, and we are both law lecturers in the Department of Law and Humanities in LYIT. And we're being partnered in this innovation by David Fennelly, who's the coordinator for clinical legal education in Trinity, and Larry Donnelly, who's from NUIG, and is similarly the coordinator of clinical legal education there. Unfortunately, he can't be with us today. But we are also in consultation with the professional body for solicitors, the Law Society of Ireland, and John Lunny is here today on behalf of them. And internationally, we, are, we have the benefit of the, uh, Georgetown University in Washington, who are the original founders of street law, have agreed to come on board as consultants as well. What do we have in common? A shared passion for improving legal education. And in legal education, the clinical legal education is probably one of the most public improvements in recent years. So part of this is very much clinical legal education, but we hope to take it up to a new level by bringing in the digital aspect. And this is why this particular forum is very opposite for what we want to do in terms of moving forward. A quick overview of what's involved. Firstly, it's an international form of public legal education. By international, it's already recognised worldwide, albeit not in Ireland. It's not currently done in any undergraduate institution in Ireland. It is, however, in the Law Society, which is the professional training college for solicitors. Public legal education, exactly what it says. It's educating the public or communities about the law. One of its founding principles is the idea of learning through teaching, where the third level students learn by teaching the law to second level students. It's a cross-sectoral collaboration, as you can see already, across on a horizontal level. We're collaborating with colleges here in Dublin, the colleges here in Galway, and hopefully further law departments nationally. In addition, it's a vertical collaboration where we're going to be collaborating with second level um, education providers as well. The focus is primarily on the law and the education of those people at, at second level in law. The learning is going to be activity based. It's not delivery of law, which is certainly different to the traditional pedagogic methods in law. So introducing street law as a method in law departments is innovative, but that's not the singular innovative aspect of our proposal. Using the digital platform is internationally innovative, in, and we're going to use it in several respects. We're going to use it for the students themselves to use it as an interface for creating the modules and for interacting with the second level students. Ultimately, we also hope to use it by cre to create a digital repository of resources which will be available for use nationwide and will allow or facilitate replication of this module in other institutions. Siobhan is now going to take over and give a little bit more detail on what we're actually going to do. So what does street law actually do uh, and what will we do um, by way of this project? We will partner with secondary schools. Our students will partner with transition year pupils in the teaching of law. Um, it's very much based on problem-based learning uh, and the street, street law methodology which has been established for a number of years now, um, the, the founders are Georgetown in the United States, it's also gaining traction across Europe uh, and uh, certainly in the UK, but this will be the first undergraduate program of its kind in Ireland. It's very much based on problem-based learning, activity-based learning, and pretty much how it works is that the students go into the schools, they meet with the pupils under our mentorship and supervision, and they decide between themselves which areas of the law they want to learn about. Um, so that's the first uh, aspect. So after those initial meetings, the students will then research and prepare lesson plans. And it's those lesson plans that form the resources that subsequently go into the digital uh, repository that Brona mentioned. So far as the lessons themselves are concerned, uh, they are very much based on an interactive methodology. So for example, if it were a criminal law matter that were being taught, it might start by showing the pupils a note, followed by a photograph, followed by one statement. 
It creates a trajectory of complexity as a story gradually unfolds to engage them. It's not about teaching them all the law on a particular area. It's about positive role modelling, whereby the law students themselves become the positive role models, both on behalf of the law in terms of showcasing its potential, its function and its potential role in your own life as a pupil and as a student, but also uh, as role models for third level education itself. Um, the three R's of street law then, as we would see them, are the research which is undertaken by the third level students under our mentorship and supervision. Uh, the replicability, which is where the digital platform comes in, because these lesson plans that they create are made digitally available to the pupils, but moreover, they become part of a permanent repository of material that is subsequently made available to other street law providers. Uh, and in that way, the programme itself is uh, creating longevity. Uh, this is very much part of the street law ethos, the sharing of resources and materials. And the reflection, because this will be an accredited module, ultimately it will be offered as an elective to uh, our law students in LYIT and in our collaborating institutions. Uh, as an elective module, it will be accredited and their own reflection on their preparation, on the lesson itself and on the interaction outside of the classroom, which will take place using the digital platform platform by way of a discussion forum, whereby the pupils themselves ultimately decide on the outcome of the case they've been presented with um, under the, the guidance of the students and ourselves as academic mentors. The third level students then reflect uh, on that process uh, through a, a debriefing meeting, uh, uh, supportive seminars and reflective journals that they then submit which forms part of the assessment. So clearly mentorship is key to this, uh, the, the mentorship of the academic staff mentoring the law students, the law students in turn mentoring the pupils and the teachers at second level will have a role in terms of moderating the digital uh, discussion forum uh, which we would envisage would be moderated both by ourselves the third level academic staff and the secondary school um, teachers. This fits in with the, uh, the, the, um, the, the digital strategy for schools uh, and with the mentorship programmes currently existing within second level. Um, uh, certainly that's the feedback that we've had from uh, our second level partners to date. So street law is not about teaching all the law, it is about building relationships and those relationships must be based on rigour and relevance in order to give the programme longevity going forward, which is uh, what we seek. Verona will now talk to you about how we intend to implement this uh, in practice. Okay, so the practice is the design and preparation is the first phase, followed by staff and student development, and we anticipate that that will take approximately six months. In the design and preparation phase, our first part of that is to establish a steering committee where we have representatives of all the partner institutions, together with representatives from the Law Society and the International Advisors Georgetown. We'll then enter the research and consultation phase where we're going to go back, and we've already spoken to third level students, and we'll mention what we've done there already in a minute. But we'll go back to them and look at what they think about how this should be um, delivered. We'll also talk to fellow academics, and that's going to be really important in terms of getting them on board in, term, in relation to the street law methodology, because it will be different for the, from the usual traditional delivery of law modules. In addition to that, we'll obviously have to consult with the international comparators where people are already delivering this. We're going to use that information. It's delivered in lots of other countries already. We can't simply take it and apply it because law is singular in the sense it's very different in this jurisdiction, so we have to modify it for here. We're going to um, also consult finally then, having got all of the information in terms of what should go into it, we're going to look to the technology and the instructional design consultants in terms of how it would be best to deliver it. And again, we're going to look back at what the students like and what will be accessible and effect effectively used by them in terms of its delivery. In terms of digital requirements, what are we going to require? Well, we're going to need a website which will act as a portal into the whole digital resource repository. But in addition, it'll also be our, one of our main forms of promotion. And we've looked at names like streetlawacademy.ie or streetlaw.ie, neither of which are used yet. In addition, there will be two digital interfaces, one between the street law um, students who will, the third level students who will deliver street law and their tutors, so giving them the support in setting up the resources before they have, uh, expose them to the second level students. And then a second one between those third level students and the second level students, which will be closely moderated at both ends by their respective um, teachers or tutors. And finally then, the, the fourth digital 
inter uh, resource will be the digital repository, which will be the each time street law is run out, there will be hopefully additions to the street law resources, which will be shared nationally and will make it easier for, to replicate it in other institutions. Having decided, consulted widely with all of the relevant stakeholders, we then decide on the content, goes back to the steering committee, we make a decision on how it should be best delivered and what goes into it. We then simply, well not simply, but we construct the digital platform with the necessary information. And during, having, while that's ongoing, then we have to go back to the staff and student development, where they need to be, we have already covered the consultation, they also need to be trained, and their training obviously is into the street law methodology mindset, but it's also, they can't forget the substantive law, we have to be actually teaching them about law. In addition, they need to learn a little bit more about teaching methodologies, because our students wouldn't have those skills automatically. We also need to cover the IT, certainly from the academic perspective, but I understand equally from the student perspective. And lastly, in the mentoring, that to ensure that everybody as they go through it is positively and well supported. At that stage then we need to get academic approval, so we'll go through the usual academic council processes of committees and programme boards and so on, in the hope that by September of next year we'll be in a position to deliver it as a pilot. We have two schools locally in Donegal already on board, where they have agreed to participate, and their response has been really enth enthusiastic. Their transition years, they're going to use it for their transition year uh, students, where it fills fairly good gaps for them in terms of teaching their students about the law. Uh, in the next phase then, uh, post the pilot study, we're going to go back and revisit all of those people we consulted before we actually delivered it, and to see did it deliver, and we'll talk a little bit more about the actual evaluation in a moment. Ultimately then, having done that, we'll put it out to the public domain, which would be in 18 months' time, and it would be where, hopefully, it would be a national resource where law departments all over the country could avail and use of it. What are our key outcomes? Well, the first one we've already mentioned is the whole idea of learning through teaching, and that's hopefully very self-evident, but it's mutually beneficial, and it's certainly one of the primary fundamental propositions with street law, that Second level students learn all about the law, that's good for them. The third level students have to learn the law in an accessible and explanatory way because they have to be able to pass it on to somebody else. The second one, again, we've slightly referred to the collaborative partnerships between third and second level educational se sectors. And that will hopefully have a knock-on effect in two ways. It will close the gap between second level and third level and ease the transition for any prospective third level students who might be thinking of coming from second level. And it also means that hopefully they'll make more informed choices about the study of law. There's a similar program with, called Slingshot in the STEM area. And it's uh, like that. We were telling them what law graduates do or showing them what law graduates do. So they hopefully will get a more realistic um, assessment of what it actually, studying the law entails. And if they do come, they'll come to stay. The third one is enhance, enhancing digital learning. Well, by simply participating in it, both second and third level students and their academics will have to become more digitally proficient. So that's hopefully an automatic knock-on effect. Learning about social justice and unmet legal need. As Siobhan already said, the content of the street law when it's delivered is determined by the audience. So firstly, they pick legal topics that are of relevance to themselves. So they learn about the law and legal systems, but in a way that's interesting and engaging for them. As a result, hopefully, they will become more active or effective citizens. They'll know what the law is there for and what it's, uh, how it can hopefully help them. For third level students, they will get a hint of reality in their application of the law. In other words, they will be looking at legal issues in the real world as opposed to from a textbook. And the last outcome that I'm looking at is learning through the street law method. Again, we've looked at that and it, it, it's progressive. It's building, it's building blocks all the way. They start off with a scenario and they, the law is integrated through it and they learn how the law actually applies in real life scenarios. So just to finish with the other key learning outcomes, street law is referred to as a pipeline program, uh, a pipeline to the legal profession. You may wonder, uh, do we really need uh, more lawyers? It's not necessarily about that. It's about creating fairer access to uh, the legal profession. So street law has traditionally in the states been delivered in the more disadvantaged areas and in schools where uh, it is perhaps raising the career aspirations of the pupils in terms of seeing themselves with a role uh, within the law. As far as the law students are concerned, the emphasis is very much on transferable skills as has been referenced elsewhere today and uh, the national strategy uh, for higher education requires us uh, to develop student skills and this is very much about skills development from communication skills to research skills to presentation skills. The academic staff too uh, will um, 
uh, undergo uh, considerable development as uh, uh, participants in the street law uh, module. Now, if that change is managed effectively, we see that this would make a very positive contribution uh, to their career development. Uh, but clearly, training would be required in uh, mentoring in the digital aspects. Uh, and in the street law methodology. Uh, but the uh, overall plan is that we create a permanent repository of uh, street law resources and we uh, enhance clinical educa legal education in Ireland at undergraduate level. Um, just to finish by talking about the all-important evaluation of impact, I know we're almost uh, out of time, but I think Brona is going to say something about how we're going to evaluate the impact. Well, briefly, in terms of impact, we have to assess where we're at, and that's where we have started. We've, we've carried out a survey in February of this year as part of doctoral studies investigating the transferable skills of law students, the difference between what they think they should get and what they are actually getting. And it was a triangulation study where we looked at academics, students, former graduates, and uh, uh, practitioners and there was a clear divergence in what they thought they should have and what they were getting. Huge emphasis on transferable skills which reiterates what's in the Hunt report. We then looked at clinical legal education over the summer where students who had participated in the module we looked at how they thought it contributed to their transferable skills development and they came back with the resounding yes absolutely and more of it please and lastly in terms of assessing where we're at the digital skill component which wouldn't be our area on the basis of the feedback we received from our proposal, we went back to our students. Naively, we would have thought that younger people are much more literate in digital, method, uh, digital things than I am. But much to my surprise, they are scarily as illiterate. Uh, two things. One, they primarily use Blackboard and Facebook. And then secondly, do they need training? Yes, but in things like Word and really basic stuff that I thought, you know, they're on the phones all the time. Surely they know how to use these things. But that came back into what we're planning to do in the sense that very clearly we have to plan for educating them in that as well. We're going to do similar con consultation after we've run out the, the module. In other words, we're going to go back to the students and see what they thought of it. Did it actually increase their skills? We're going to go back to the second level teachers and see how they thought they developed over the course of it. Talk to fellow academics who delivered it. And then we have program boards, so we're going to look at the assessments and so on. Has it improved their performance academically as well? Uh, and that hopefully will give us a rounded picture. Having done that, then we reiterate and refine and keep doing it until we get it right. I think that's pretty much it. Thanks, both okay. of you. Thank you. Both